Welcome back. Uh, here we are going to jump into combining like terms with negative coefficients. So if you guys completed um, the first lesson, which was combining like terms, uh, you should have uh, been able to kind of recall some of the um, some of the steps that we we always take when we're looking at these expressions. Um, this is going to be very similar. The only difference is now you're really going to um, what really is going to come into play are those uh, those properties, those rules that we followed. With, uh, with integers. And this is why I think it's a very important one to review because you're gonna be using these rules, these properties um, in eighth grade and all throughout high school as well. And so uh, I thought this would be a good time to just maybe brush up on these and to see what you guys remember. So if you look at this first question that I have up here, you're gonna see I have 4z minus, or we can call it a negative, Remember, minus and negative are the exact same thing. Um, you're, you're going to the left of the number line um, with either one. And then I have a negative 3z. You should remember, I hope you remember, when you guys see I have two negatives, all right? Two negatives right next to each other. Um, if you guys ever see that, and if I would just rewrite this, my suggestion is that you guys would have a separate piece of paper um, it's kind of hard to show you my work on a separate piece of paper on something like this. But I would suggest if you would have a separate piece of paper, you rewrite the problem. And I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it here. 4z. That stays the same. But if you remember, I have two negatives. Those two negatives, that makes it a positive. Okay. Anytime I have two negative signs, two minus signs right next to each other, that means it's going to become a positive. And then I'm going to write that number down. So instead of having me say uh, 4z minus a negative 3z, it really becomes 4z plus 3z. Anytime those two negatives are next to each other, becomes a positive. So now I can just go ahead, do exactly what that sign is telling me. 4z plus 3z, I have 7z. And I'm done. Go to the next one. So on this one here, um, you're going to see a trend here. You're going to see a bunch of negative signs, a bunch of positive signs throughout the whole expression. Um, my suggestion, I would rewrite these. Um, I would first maybe underline my variables. You can use another color if you want. If it helps to see it on the screen like this, that's why I'm doing that. I have plus one and a negative six. And then once I do that, I kind of, I'm separating them. I think it's personally easier to just rewrite these over onto the side using a separate piece of paper. I think it's kind of difficult to write these on the computer, but um, this is the easiest way I've been able to figure out for you guys to see what I'm doing as well. Um, but for you guys at home, I think it would be easier for you to just do it on a separate piece of paper. Um, I'll do my coefficients first. That means the numbers with the variable. So 8t. This is a negative 4t. I know there's a plus sign here with the negative 4t, but plus a negative is the same thing as just saying a negative, negative 4t or minus 4t. Then I have plus 1, so we'll go ahead and do that. Plus 1 and a negative 6. Plus a negative 6 or just minus 6. Okay, so what I would do first is I would first look at the 8t minus 4t, 8 minus 4, that's 4t. If you guys are getting stuck on these or getting confused, my first um, guess is that you're not writing these out. You need to rewrite these so that you do not get confused by seeing, um, by combining the wrong things. Because if you do not rewrite these and separate these, my bet is you're going to see 8t plus 1 and you're going to say 9t and then you're going to go to a negative 4t, and then it's going to be, you're going to combine all of these, and you're going to make it a mess, okay? Separate these, all right? You see that there's a process here. You only have seven problems. These should not take you long, okay? If you guys rewrite these, I know this extra work, but if you rewrite them and work them out on a separate piece of paper, these should come pretty, um, pretty easily to you, okay? Now I have plus one and a negative six, okay? You're going to have to remember what happens now. I know you can say plus 1 minus 6 too. Either one works. What happens when I have different signs? Okay. 
That's what you should be thinking about. And when you have different signs, your answer, you're always going to be subtracting, okay? Different signs, a plus and a negative, a negative and a positive. Whenever they're combined together like that, you're going to be subtracting. And then the biggest number is going to give it sign, okay? So if I'm looking at this, plus 1 minus 6, I'm going to subtract. So 6 minus 1 is 5. But the biggest number gives it sign. The biggest number is a negative, okay? That negative belongs to the 6. The positive belongs to the 1. This negative is going to be bigger than the positive. So that's going to be a negative 5. Hopefully you guys remember that. We spent a lot of time over the first two quarters going over that. Um, go to the next one. Again, first step. Please identify what you have as your like terms. All right. I have the coefficients there, my variables there, and I have a whole number here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. Um, they actually have these separated for you. So you, you might not even, in this case, you don't need to really rewrite this because they did make that separation. You have the, the coefficients, all of this stuff is right here for you. And then you have a plus five all by itself. So I know that five, you're not gonna combine that five with the, with the coefficients. So that is gonna be left all by himself. What I could do now is I go over here and negative two and negative four K negative 2k and negative 4k. So when I have same signs, okay, same signs meaning a negative and a negative, a positive and a positive. If I have same signs like that, that means I'm going to be adding, no matter what, you are gonna be adding those terms, okay? You add the terms and you keep the signs. So I'm gonna add, sorry, this doesn't mean they're gonna stay positive. It just means you're adding them, okay? Maybe I should, uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page here. If you have same signs, you will always be adding, okay? Always add, no matter if it's two negatives. If it's two positives, you will add these signs up, or add these terms up, and then, Whatever sign you have, you're going to keep it the same. Okay, so you see I have negative 2k and negative 4k. Same signs, add the numbers, that means I have 6, 6k, but because they're both negative, you keep the sign negative 6k plus 5. That 5 does not get added or subtracted with the k. Okay, that 5 is all by himself. It does not have a k next to it, so you just add it. Or you just, you just attach it. And there we go. Go on to the next one. I have negative 5 plus negative 5r plus 10. I think the biggest mistake I would see right away that I could predict from um, a lot of you guys, and that's okay. Let's call it out now. Let's see. Um, is that you're going to say, hey, negative 5 and negative 5. No. Okay. We cannot combine those. Negative 5 and negative 5r, but negative 5r has a variable. I cannot combine a whole number with a number with a variable with a coefficient, okay? So what I'm going to do right away, um, this actually can become pretty easy if you guys notice this. If you see that I have only one variable in this expression, it's negative 5r, I know that variable is not going to be touched, okay? That's not going to be changed. So I'm just going to go ahead and write negative 5r. Now I can go ahead and com combine uh, to make this easier. Let's practice what I'm preaching here. Rewrite this. I would say negative 5r. I like to put my variables first. Negative 5r plus 10 minus 5 or negative 5. Okay, again, means the same thing. Now, I, like I said, negative 5r, this is the only number with a variable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rewrite that number in my answer. That's not gonna get touched. That's not gonna get changed. Then I go to the next section. Next, se next section I'm gonna work on is 10 minus five. 10 minus five is five. That's a positive five because the 10 is bigger than the five. All 
All right, let's do one more here. Good reminder again, whenever you guys see the double negative, oops, whenever you see the double negative here, you should be thinking, okay, two negatives are gonna make a positive. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, if I would rewrite this, I would say y, two negatives, positive, positive, three, y. And if I have a variable all by itself, that you can assume it's going to have the value of a 1. So we don't write it there, but you guys can make that assumption. 1y plus 3y, that's going to be 4y. And that's all you have to do. Again, like I said always before, please let me know if you're confused on these. And if you are confused and I respond to you, please, please try to make um, give me a time frame where you can either call me, um, you can either send me a picture of the problem and I can run walk it through with you. It's always easier though, I think, if you um, would call or set up a conference time um, during my office hours and I will be happy to work that out for you. Um, but I've had a lot of you guys maybe will say, hey, I'm confused, I don't know what to do. I respond back and I get nothing back from you. So please try to, uh, try to take uh, some ownership here and um, tell me a time that would work best for you uh, to, to work on these problems and we will set that up. Uh, thank you again for your work.